Okay, so just a few moments ago, uh, we were um, sitting over in the conference room, and I was lucky enough to be with um, the very group that has been suing the crap out of me for the better part of the last couple years. Thank you for that, all right? Um, thank you for understanding that uh, this is not a straightforward process a lot of the time. And thank you for working with my team of guys that, and women that are in the Attorney General's office, and I'm gonna mention in a second, uh, Ed, and our energy director. But I appreciate the experience of this collegiality because the only way we're gonna actually improve our environment is to work together. That, that really is true. So um, thank you for joining us. We're gonna, um, I wanna mention some special guests from our Children's Tr Trust and Earth Justice. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Okay. That's great. Uh, and so we're announcing that we've reached settlement with Navahine Climate Litigation um, Stars. That's you guys. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if your last name is Navahine. First name, oh, son of a gun. Much better. Uh, yes. Uh, and I wanted to comment, and I did comment. Uh, with the crowd that as a father I often think about the world that we're leaving for our kids. For me it's Maya and Sam. Maya's 17, Sam he's 14 and much of what my generation took for granted like drinking from a hose outside or um, making enough from one job nine to five pay rent that's not possible right now. Things are so different. I shared with the um, the young plaintiffs that I appreciated their advocacy and their strength this last uh, several years because I was lucky enough to work on environmental causes when I was 17 and to work on uh, the impact of acid rain and climate change then. And so our generation just hasn't done a good enough job to, to control uh, what happens in the atmosphere and how we're destroying our ozone. So they're fighting this fight. And that was what this lawsuit was about, although I will let them speak for themselves uh, more eloquently. We are the most isolated landmass on the planet. We're dependent too dependent on fossil fuels. We're vulnerable to climate change impacts like sea level rise, coastal erosion, extreme weather events as we saw in Maui, um, coral bleaching, which is devastating uh, to the, the fauna that are in the ocean. So it's very important that they stand up for the future. Uh, we've set ambitious goals to decarbonize our economy, including, as we've talked about a lot, the 100% renewable energy goals and electrifying our ground transportation fleet by 2035. These are important things to take up, but they are certainly not the whole story. Our Hawaii State Energy Office, and we love Glick, he's terrific actually, uh, they've published a decarbonization strategy for us to help us reach those goals, and it includes a lot of what we've been talking about, guys, like um, reducing consumption, incentivizing our, our fleet, working with Department of Transportation, encouraging hotels to also change the way they do things with their fleets, changing the way we do inter-island travel. It's very carbon intensive without a doubt. Um, so I'm just proud to be here with you. Um, you guys are passionate. We're gonna talk uh, with youth like Riley and Pohonu. Uh, they threw a volunteer youth council on climate mitigation adaptation, our leaders, just straight up. And we're encouraging everyone outside to follow their lead. There's a climate change portal where we will put information and we will honor uh, those who have been a part of this process to put their materials there too, climate.hawaii.gov. It has resources, but it, those resources can be improved and augmented by the superstars that we have, which is you. So we're celebrating the settlement today. Uh, you had great lawyers. You have actually people who believe in what you're fighting for. So it's groundbreaking. You're the first uh, in the country, I believe, in a state to succeed. And I hope that others will follow this lead. I will tell you, I get a lot of emails from Michael Wilson celebrating what you're doing. And though you guys are more mature than him, <laughs> I will tell you that you have a great ally in that uh, retiring justice, okay? And so you have a constitutional right to fight for life-sustaining climate policy, and you have mobilized our people. Uh, in this case, uh, Ed uh, Sniffen, who I, f I feel is one of our strongest workers in the state, and he, believe me, will be a powerful partner with you going forward as you share ideas with him and you share uh, what you believe deeply. Um, so thank you for this, this battle. 
Uh, we are grateful that you stood up and filed suit back June 2022. 20, uh, Fortunately, it was against David Ige and not me, technically. I'm just here to finish the job with you guys, humbly. Um, but we're going to be glad to hear from some of you as plaintiffs, Native Hawaiians, and people who are passionate uh, to save this planet. Uh, thank you, Ed. Where's Ed? Right there. Thank you for working with this group of exceptional people. Um, it's, it's our kuleana as government officials, as elected, appointed, as leaders, uh, to listen. And uh, we're listening. So again, thank you. You have done something special. And I will sit down and hear the real experts uh, now. Aloha. Mahalo, Governor Green, for opening up uh, today, this historic day. Up next, Andrea Rogers, Deputy Director of U.S. Strategy for Our Children's Trust, co-counsel for the Navahine Plaintiffs. Good afternoon, and thank you, Governor Green. Um, I'm Andrea Rogers, Deputy Director of U.S. Strategy for Our Children's Trust and one of the attorneys on the Navahine versus Department of Transportation lawsuit. I'm honored to be here today to announce this unprecedented settlement agreement that is truly one for the ages. Um, thank you first to the courageous 13 youth plaintiffs who have led us to this day and whose advocacy and tenacity inspired Hawaii's three branches of government to come together to uphold and protect their constitutional rights to a livable climate. Thank you to our plaintiffs' families, um, to our 10 amazing expert witnesses in this case who dedicated their time and tremendous knowledge, to our local partners, and our deep, deep gratitude um, to the in leadership and innovation of Governor Green, of Director Sniffen, the Hawaii Attorney General's Office, without whom this historic agreement would never have been possible. The settlement agreement represents transformative change towards the protection of young people's constitutional rights to a livable climate. Our Children's Trust began this work with youth to secure their rights in Hawaii 13 years ago, first with a petition for rulemaking and then in partnership with Earth Justice in Navahine versus Hawaii Department of Transportation, the world's first youth-led constitutional climate change case focused on stopping climate pollution from transportation. All these years later, youth plaintiffs and their government have achieved an unprecedented settlement agreement that recognizes that youth do, in fact, have constitutional rights to a livable climate and that their voices matter. Under the agreement, the state of Hawaii will develop a holistic roadmap to fully decarbonize the state's transportation system, taking all actions necessary to achieve zero emissions no later than 2045 for ground transportation, sea and inner island air transportation. Importantly, the agreement gives youth a voice and a seat at the table with the creation of a volunteer youth council to help to Director Sniffen take on this enormous challenge. Hawaii's leadership will offer a model for states and countries around the world to start tackling transportation emissions. This agreement prioritizes innovative transportation solutions that can stop the state's dependence on imported fossil fuels and ensure people's mobility with safe and pollution-free choices. What we see today is democracy in action. With the coming together of all three branches of government, led by our youth, who act activated their courts when their rights were in danger. For the first time, all three branches of government are committing to work together to do what they must do, according to best available science, to protect young people's constitutional rights to a life-sustaining climate and to secure for them a hopeful future in Hawaii. Over a decade ago, Our Children's Trust began representing youth all around the world seeking judicial protection of their climate rights. A global movement has developed, and today in Hawaii, we see real progress as we stand in partnership with our allies celebrating this historic agreement. We are so grateful for these young leaders who have devoted their time, their energy, and their positivity to solving the climate crisis and protecting the islands that they love and to the adults standing with them who listened and acted. 
I'm honored to turn over the podium to our two of our youth plaintiffs, Pahonu and Riley Brooke, to share what this agreement means to them. Thank you. Ea he he mai nei ka makani alo pali, pali pali o Kamehame, mehameha kalea o ke kupe e o ko ona pou, pou o hia o na hale mau na ihoa ai ia e lani po, aloha mai kako. Wau no o Japheth Pahonu Komen. I am Japheth Pahonu Komen, and I am humbly honored to celebrate this historic agreement with you all here today. This victory we are meeting, we are celebrating is a testament to all who had the courage to step out and make a stand on both sides of this case. Because we, the youth, in this case, had the courage to speak up, and because government officials like Director Sniffin had the courage to sit down and listen. We are here today with an actionable and enforceable agreement that puts Hawaii's transportation system on the fast track to advance key climate solutions, like electrifying and expanding our food network of clean transportation choices. Courage is what got us here. And we don't speak enough about the role of courage in our culture. Our elders had immense courage to set out across the ocean to come here. Our elders like Papa Mao, who took immense risks to perpetuate our voyaging traditions that endure to this day. Without the courage of George Helm and Uncle Walter Reddy, and many others, the sacred island of Koho'olawe would still be a bombing range. Courage matters. And I have learned that courage is something that all of us can muster when we stand for what we love. Let the deep love we all share for our island home feel our courage to do what is necessary. No ke aloha aina anona kanaka hoi. This moment is certainly a historical moment, but it is also a reminder of how far we've come and how much farther we must still go. The canoes from throughout the Pacific just gathered at Kualoa for the 2024 Festival of Pacific Arts. And with them came the dreams of our vast Moana for a real commitment to countering climate change in every possible way. Over the next 20 years, each and every one of us must make a tremendous effort to reduce emissions and educate our peers and others. This is how we follow through with the commitment being made today. Lasting victory for all of us in Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Riley Brooke Kamahele. I am 16 years old, and I am one of the youth plaintiffs. At the age of eight, I founded a nonprofit organization to empower children and inspire the next generation to be leaders. For the past eight years, I have been dedicated to advocating for change through the legislative process and bill writing. My deep connection to the Aina and my desire to protect the future for Keiki fuels my passion for this work, guided by what I feel is a very important Indigenous principle. I believe it's crucial to consider the next seven generations when making decisions. This commitment has been the driving force for my involvement in this case. All three branches of Hawaii's state government have now heard our plea and taken action like never before to protect our constitutional rights to a livable climate. Guided by the best available science and the ike of our kupuna, all of us, Governor Green, Director Sniffin, the legislature, the courts, and all of us climate advocates are working together to decarbonize our transportation system and save our future. Today is a victory for us, the state, and every young person who believes in the power of their voice. Today is a testament to what can be achieved when we stand together with purpose and conviction to hold our governments to their promises for our planet. Let this be a reminder to all the youth, your passion, 
your advocacy and your persistence can shape the world we live in. Let's continue to speak up, to take action, and to strive for a future where sustainability and justice prevail. Mahalo Nui to everyone who supported us on this journey, our families, our legal team, and our community. Mahalo Riley Brooke and Pahonu. Up next, Kira Kahahane, Deputy Attorney General, who was the lead attorney for the state of Hawaii in this case. Ano ai ke aloha, ya o kou pākahi a pau, mai ka lāhiki o hae hae a hiki ka lākou o ka uma. Ua lana ke aloha mana kai e valu. Good afternoon. My name is Kira Kahahane. I am a Deputy Attorney General at the Department of the Attorney General. We're here today because Hawaii is rising to the challenge of decarbonizing its transportation system. This agreement was made possible by strong leadership. The Governor, the Hawaii Department of Transportation and the Department of the Attorney General cooperated closely to develop a settlement that represents this administration's goals and priorities. Under the agreement, the Department of Transportation will continue to invest in innovative new programs and projects. DOT will also expand public access to information about the many actions it is taking to make Hawaii's transportation system cleaner, safer, and more energy efficient. Among the many actions outlined in the settlement agreement, here are a few major steps that DOT will take. Within the next year, DOT will develop a greenhouse gas reduction plan that will serve as a blueprint for DOT's efforts to decarbonize the statewide transportation system. The GHG reduction plan includes interim greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets intended to help achieve the state's 2045 zero emissions clean economy target. The plan will continually be updated as DOT reevaluates its progress in achieving its GHG reduction goals with comprehensive reviews and updates at five year intervals. DOT will rework its planning processes and criteria for ground transportation projects. As part of these changes, DOT will consider climate change mitigation as a primary goal and objective at the next planning cycle beginning in April 2025. DOT will begin evaluating transportation projects with an objective scientifically based methodology to assess and report the total long-term impacts of its projects on GHG emissions and vehicle miles traveled. DOT will incorporate this methodology into its planning process and use this information in the preparation of annual reports outlining its progress in reducing vehicle miles traveled and GHG emissions. Keeping in line with the state's ongoing commitment to decarbonization, DOT will accelerate its existing efforts to expand the statewide public electric vehicle charging network and will coordinate with the counties to improve the statewide pedestrian, bicycle, and public transit networks, making it easier for users to choose cleaner modes of transportation to meet their daily needs. One of the most important steps in decarbonizing the transportation system is increasing public education, outreach, and community engagement. To that end, DOT and the other parties to this settlement will partner to develop and implement programs to support the work of decarbonizing the transportation system that emphasize the important role of the public and maximize awareness of clean transportation choices and opportunities. Through the settlement agreement, the state of Hawaii demonstrates its ongoing commitment to combating climate change. E mua kako. Mahalo, Kira. Up next, Lena Alale, Senior Associate Attorney, Earth Justice, Mid Pacific Office, Co Counsel for Navahine Plaintiff. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for being here. Today's settlement, when implemented, will make Hawaii a leader in reducing transportation emissions, the largest single source of greenhouse gases here and across the continental United States. This is the critical decade for climate action. What we do or don't do in the next 10 years will determine the future of life on Earth for generations to come. That is why we are thrilled to be here today 
with Governor Green and Director Sniffen as they pledge the power and the resources of the state's most well-funded agency to the fight against climate change. As others have mentioned, under this agreement, the state will develop a, and implement a detailed roadmap to get us to zero transportation emissions by 2045, the critical time frame needed to stop climate change before it is too late. The state will hold itself accountable to meeting this deadline by updating the plan every five years, publishing annual updates, and incorporating public feedback every step of the way. Also in the next year, HDOT will start tracking and reporting the greenhouse gas impacts of individual projects, prioritize construction of projects that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and use the data it gathers to ensure we meet the 2045 goal. The state will take immediate ambitious steps towards building the cleaner, safer, cheaper transportation system of the future, including by completing the island-wide networks of bike paths and sidewalks and accelerating much needed electric vehicle charging infrastructure. The clean transportation transformation outlined in this agreement will be overseen by a new unit at HDOT dedicated to decarbonization and applying complete streets principles to all projects. And yet this is just the beginning of the paradigm shift that we need to transform our transportation system. The real work begins now. But this agreement gives Hawaii a boost in our race against climate disaster and offers a model of best practices that other jurisdictions can also implement. I want to end by thanking again our state partners, our co-counsel, and most of all the youth plaintiffs who made this lawsuit possible. These OPO carry the ike of many generations about Hawaii, its resources, and how to protect them. Mahalo to each and every one of you for bringing your hope and enthusiasm to this lawsuit and to this settlement and to our continued and ongoing collaboration with uh, our government leaders to confront the climate emergency. Thank you. Mahalo Lena Ala. Finally, please welcome Hawaii Department of Transportation Director Ed Sniffen. Aloha, Mike Kako. Ed Sniffen with Hawaii DOT. Uh, first, I want to thank the plaintiffs in this case, um, and not for suing me, but, but for, for making sure that you stand up and, and protect your communities, for speaking out on what you believe is important. The governor, in, in, the, um, in a meeting with the uh, with the plaintiffs had told them, you know, he was kind of like them when he was growing up. I was nothing like them. Um, at this age, I was I was hanging out at the beach trying to figure out what I'm going to eat. I mean, that was that was my my coordination with the community. For them to speak out on something that they they really believe in, absolutely trem uh, tremendous. Two speakers that came up that represented uh, the case, absolutely amazing. Really really impressed in in the way that you carry yourselves. Um, for this case. What this means for the DOT, um, it's going to allow us to do several things. Uh, first, to be a lot more aggressive in our approach to ensuring that we, we can push forward harder on our, on, on our climate mitigation of strategies. Um, and allow us to, to organize ourselves a little bit better to ensure that we can, we can tell that story to the public. All towards the common goal of ensuring that we can magnify our efforts. <clears throat> this is a lot of work that's going to happen. Not going to be. It wouldn't be possible by just by the DOT. We're making sure that we can partner up with our with our climate um, our climate leaders, partner up with our, our other government agencies, and then share this message across the nation to ensure that we can magnify our efforts here um, with everybody else. Will help all of us make sure we hit our climate goals. We we have extremely um, tough goals to hit by 2045. And this is going to help us make sure we move forward a lot faster. One of the biggest things that uh, Kira had talked about is making sure we have our plan in place, our methodology to ensure that we can measure uh, GHG emissions on each of the initiatives that we push. Set the plan to ensure that we have a roadmap on how, on how we move forward, a roadmap that can be updated as we go through. And then keep everybody involved so everybody can see where we partner. There's going to be decisions that we're going to make as we go forward. That's going to piss some people off. I mean, it's going to have to happen. The governor talked about it, making sure that we're less reliant on fuel in different areas. There's going to be impacts to mobility in different areas that are going to be difficult but better for the environment. 
When we do that, we're going to circle up and ensure that we're not standing alone on this. Our partners will be with us to ensure that we can educate the community. Our communities here, our communities in the, in the mainland, our communities across the world. Really looking forward to this opportunity to push this forward to make sure Hawaii can lead in this, in this climate crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right now, uh, as you see, this coalition actually will help drive legislation policy. Uh, it's not uh, going to be simple any longer where people just go for what is cheapest um, or most expedient. Now we actually have to be more thoughtful about what the carbon impact will be. We have not had a discussion about the super ferry because that comes with a whole lot of additional concerns for the environment, which a lot of our environmental community, the very people that were partners, had concerns about. I think people are going to have to be more thoughtful about the amount that they travel. That's going to be one thing that uh, is signature to what we do. Also, we're working hard through this kind of work to find alternative fuels so that we have renewable biofuels. We have actually had some people present technologies to us that are driven by renewables uh, for, uh, for example, low altitude transportation. But again, it has to be much less um, carbon intensive. That's very important. Uh, if there are any experts on uh, this issue, I welcome them up too. One of the nice things about this coalition is that it forms kind of a, a uh, I guess, a new alliance on travel between the islands. We also have to acknowledge that there is a very, very heavy carbon footprint for travel from the mainland to Hawaii. And so we're going to be encouraging and supporting innovative uh, technologies that other R&D firms across the globe uh, take up. Because there will come a time when we can use uh, much more renewable energy for travel. I think that's very important to us. Sure. Sure. I will bring up the um, our Attorney General designee uh, today. Uh, I'll say a couple things. Uh, historically, it is not easy to simply uh, pass legislation and move policy just because it's right. Uh, it often is not the priority of government. Uh, you have to be thinking about the uh, deeper future, and that's what young people do. We have these policies in mind, but we don't often have the resources that come from the legislature. We don't often have the absolute insistence uh, because of the courts to do certain things. And so having a settlement like this creates some guarantees. Uh, to be honest, as we were contemplating the details of the settlement, I was encouraging it to be uh, robust because it will help me when I go back to the legislature and say, look, we have to do this. These young people kick dad's butt in court. <laughs> Actually, I should say it nicely. These, uh, these advocates and environmental, uh, my environmentally minded people uh, set into motion full commitments, legal commitments that we now have to live up to. So they have to be part of our policy plans going forward. So there's no backing out of it. Uh, I believe the cost was about $3 million. And you know, if this had dragged on for a long time, it's, it was dollars that could have been better used for electric vehicles, changing out our fleet, building out very comprehensive and, and not simple plans for the coming years. <laughs> yes, we consider that $3 million money well spent because it put us in a position where we had the experienced team necessary 
to get this place, this case to a place where it could be resolved. And we're very grateful that we will be able to take the money that we would have spent on a trial of this case and put it directly into climate change mitigation. I believe your your question was if there will be any monetary payment to Earth Justice, our Children's Trust, or the plaintiffs. Uh, this is not a monetary settlement, so there will be no monetary consideration paid to any of the parties to the settlement agreement. Okay, so the, the plaintiffs have made a trustee for their own money. That's correct. Plus, if we come up short, Chris is pretty rich, and he works on both sides of this deal, so we will talk to him after the settlement. Why, why don't um, Navahine, come on up. Tell us what you think about this. Come on. Don't be scared. You just sued me successfully. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then Ed and I will comment. Talk about what it meant to get involved, if you don't mind. Um, I'm Navahine. I'm a native Hawaiian. I grew up in Hakibu, Oahu. Um, my family has farmed Kalo on Kuleana lands for 10 generations. And I think recently, and more so when I heard about the case, I realized the effect, effects of climate change, like the drought and the flooding, the sea level rise, and it. my farm and all the crop that we get is what we live off of. So seeing the effects and how we were struggling to make any money from our farm kind of push me towards this case. So she has a real world experience. Perfect, thank you. Um, I, I will tell you that, uh, first of all, the legislature is getting a lot younger. It, it is interesting, if you look at the number of legislators that are in the House right now uh, are in their first or second term, and there are a lot more people that are getting into policy and advocacy in early age. I absolutely expect some of the 13 individuals that brought this suit to consider policy work, perhaps elected office, perhaps um, starting their own companies. But I would also just comment that uh, back when, when those of us were born in the 70s, okay, it was much more difficult to get the kind of education that they get. It's really extraordinary in our schools, uh, speaking about the environment. There also is a lot more capacity to communicate with uh, social media and activism. So for us, it took many, many months to reach out and get petitions. That's the way things were done. This generation is able to mobilize many thousands of voices quickly. And that is in many ways what we saw. Uh, going to the courts and having this amount of attention is quite extraordinary too. Um, I think it's terrific. If any other of the young plaintiffs wanted to make a comment, I'd totally welcome it if it would help. Do you have any friends you want to invite up? Uh, can I, um, how old are you guys? You want to share with us? I'm 16 years old. Hi, I'm 17. My name is Messina. Thanks for inviting me out. Sure. I think a great thing to talk about is the kind of hope that this brings for all of us. Because for so many of us, this is not our first time advocating for climate change. It's kind of been our whole life that we've seen our beaches falling into the water and seen the coral reefs disappearing and our farmlands and the hurricanes and testifying at bills, writing letters to the governor and to finally be a part of a case where we have lawyers to represent us and to have people like Ed Smithin and the governor to actually listen to our voices and be one of the 13 youth who for the first time have a genuine seat at the table where the decisions are being made is incredible. And I think that I can speak for all the youth 
in Hawaii that we are incredibly happy that we have a seat at the table and that we can be here as the decisions are being made. Our next question. Our next question comes from Savannah from HPR, similar to Daryl. She loves her two for questions too. And this is for Director Sniffen. If you want to come up, please. Ki olu olu. Has so two part. Ed, has the department changed its approach since the case was first filed, and how? And then the second question is: DOT confident that it can make Hawaii's 2045 decarbonization goal? Uh, answer for the first, the second question first. Yes, absolutely, um, because it's in the law. It's it's in the requirements. We're moving forward. Uh, for the first portion, since the start of the case, we started discussing how we could adjust. Several of the things that were uh, identified in the case was, uh, and, and through our discussions with um, our Children's Trust and, and um, Earth Justice was, some of the things that we were doing um, in response to climate change mitigation uh, wasn't publicly known. Uh, it just wasn't out there. So getting more information out to the public or, or setting up a venue to ensure we did that setting up a structure within our offices to ensure that there was alignment between all modes of transportation, airports, highways, and harbors, were important in the discussions. And all of those started moving forward already. The, the additional units that were, being, um, that were talked about as part of the settlement are already set. So there was movement throughout to ensure that we make sure we set ourselves up uh, to meet the terms of the settlement um, that our partners um, and, and we had agreed to and, and, and discussed. So yes, um, significant movement already. And we're all ready to move forward to ensure that we, we fulfill this goal together. I'm going to add something um, also to take this opportunity. So we have young advocates with us. We have legal experts with us who understand uh, deeply the, the needs of, of our fight against um, climate change. You know, we've been for two years, and we're going to keep doing this, two years humbly asking, and I have advocates and allies in the legislature, but also we haven't had quite enough uh, support uh, to pass some kind of a fee. Uh, we have 10 million individuals that come to Hawaii every year. Can you imagine for a moment if we successfully were humbly asking people to pay $25 when they came to the state? That would be $250 million every single year to pay for the bikeways, to bring extra very advanced analytics uh, to what our carbon uh, impact is from any of the technologies, to, uh, to use that money to get bonds to navigate um, major protections against uh, uh, erosion of this, you know, of the coastline. I mean, it's, it is not going to be inexpensive. It is not going to be easy. And so humbly as we go forward, I hope people strongly consider some mechanism to do that. Uh, because if we don't, we'll always be kind of trying to, you know, scrape together a few dollars to deal with the challenges that we face, which are not small. Um, I think we owe it to ourselves to really fund these programs that have been well thought out and have come and now are a mandate for us from, you know, from a statutory and legal standpoint. So I hope people will see that from even before the fire, we were asking to do something of this sort. And I, and I know we're thinking hard about it. The challenges are rising. It's getting more difficult to afford uh, insurance against disasters. So we're lucky to have Chris working with our leaders on that. It's getting more and more expensive to deal with the impact of climate change. And we just, as was eloquently shared earlier, we just had FESPAC here, which was uh, 25 nations came to be with Hawaii, and all of them are really, really impacted by sea level rise right now. And it, I would hope that the whole world starts to see that having some way to deal with that impact is going to be necessary. So we hope that Hawaii will lead just like it led today because of this lawsuit. We hope that Hawaii will have the opportunity to lead on this for our country. So uh, expect us to be pushing that uh, as a, um, a complement to this settlement. Mahalo, Governor. Our final question comes from Daryl Huff, Hawaii News Now. Part three.
Thank you for your question. Um, there is a dispute resolution provision in the settlement agreement. And the hope is um, if a dispute comes up with respect to whether the terms are being complied with, the parties will meet and confer and try to informally resolve the dispute. However, the court has agreed to accept continuing jurisdiction over the settlement agreement through 2045 or as soon as the zero emissions target is achieved. So if court assistance is needed, it's there for us. Thank you. And, and that provides a very helpful backstop. So uh, again, you know, we've had some aspirational goals, but when they are well spelled out in the law, uh, whether through statute or through resolution, from my standpoint, it makes it easier for us to chase goals and to be aspirational. So if I may just uh, close, I'm, I'm going to say a simple mahalo uh, to everyone who was involved in this process, but particularly to the 13 young plaintiffs who did have the courage at a very young age to stand up and fight for their future and for all of our future. So mahalo, guys. Appreciate you.